Welcome in to game 10 of the 2024 Banana Ball World Tour. Loved by our right hand arm, Man Zappos. Tonight we kick off three games across the weekend here in Jacksonville, Florida. With the Bananas riding a four game winning streak to get above 500 for the first time on the tour, they return to a city they swept a year ago. We will have Robert Anthony Cruz and Sean Fluke both on the mic as they battle it out in the second inning. Noah Bridges will get his first at bat of the tour and for the first time ever, we will have a mic on stilts when he comes in to pitch. It's gonna be one heck of a Friday night from Duval. Welcome in now to one one Financial Ballpark where nearly 10,000 Bananiacs and Party Animals faithful have braved the storms. They have been absolutely deluged upon by Mother Nature, but they're still fired up and ready for some banana ball. Thank you so much for spending your Friday night, Big Tiger Friday, at that with us here in Virtual Banana Land. Alongside Josh Tolevsky, I'm Biko Scala. Welcome inside the booth. Josh, the Nanners, winners of four straight. They have turned this thing around early. Look, here's what I know. Rain or shine, banana ball gets played tonight, which is excellent. And yes, Bananas, winners of four consecutive games, and they've done it with the pitching side of things. The Bananas switched up that pitching rotation last weekend, and boy, did they silence the party animals' bats throughout the weekend in Savannah, Georgia. And it was all highlighted on Sunday in Banana Fest. The party animals only to scratch only able to scratch three hits across the Bananas pitching staff. This is game 10 of the 2024 Banana Ball World Tour, loved by our silly rabbit, Zappos. The Bananas are five and four, winners of four straight, and looking to stay red hot as the tour heads to Jacksonville, Florida. Let's get a look at their defensive alignment tonight against their arch rivals, the Party Animals. From left to right in the outfield, it's Robert Anthony Cruz, D.R. Meadows, and Danny Hosley. Third to first in the infield, you see Gabe Howell, Ryan Cox, Jackson Olsen, and Eric Jones Jr. Behind the plate, it is Bill Leroy, and on the bump, it's Ryan Kellogg. Yeah, so far through nine games, the Bananas with 47 total team trick plays. Ryan Cox leading the Bananas and the 2024 World Tour with 19 of those trick plays. But you can't forget Jackson Olsen cracking double digits for the first time in a single month in his career. And we'll see if Gabe Howell over there at third base has a couple more trick plays in him tonight. Let's zoom in on Ryan Kellogg, the six foot six southpaw out of Whitby, Ontario. The great maple of Banana Land, who is one of the best pitchers on last year's tour in just two outings this year, trying to get his bearings, although his first relief appearance was four spectacular innings. Yeah, and he went four innings in his last start for the Bananas, gave up seven hits and six runs, all of which were earned. But what was interesting for Kellogg was uh, a lot of it started out with him hitting a batter and then allowing a sprint. So if Ryan Kellogg can just control the base runners that he allows on the bags himself with his sprints, with his hit by pitches, he is probably going to be able to limit the damage from this Party Animals lineup tonight. We have a new look to this Party Animals lineup that was exactly the same one through five through the first seven games. And now it looks completely different here. Reese Hampton still at the top, but Noah Fisher moves up into the two hole. Jake Skull hitting third. Dalton Cornett down to the cleanup spot. Bryson Bloomer up to the five spot. Tanner Thomas down to number six. And then Acuff, Delano, Baber, and Swan, the usual suspects at the bottom of the order. Yeah, and with the Bananas starting the lefty and Kellogg, they figure they'll mess around with some things, move Fisher up in this order, and Bryson Bloomer in just his third game back is going to get the boost in the five spot as we send this down to the young professor. I need you to yell at the top of your lungs. Start the clock in three, two, one. Showtime! It happened an hour and 39 minutes later than we had planned, but the clock on the two hour timer starts ticking at 8.39 p.m. Eastern. Here in Jax, where Florida begins, Banana Ball kicks off its 10th game of the tour. The fifth round draft pick of the Chicago Cubs in 2015 on the bump. 
the 12th round draft pick of the Detroit Tigers in 2018 at the dish. The switch hitter, Reese Hampton, with a 2-1 count on him. And I think it's going to be really interesting early on in this game for Ryan Kellogg to see how he's able to command the strike zone tonight. Never easy as a pitcher to take so much time off due to a rain delay and just try and find the ways to stay warm before the game kicks off. Two two coming here from Kellogg. Bounced on a couple hops. Gabe Howell between the legs across the diamond. He has his third trick play in five tries. Good start for Ryan. I mean, a stellar trick play from Gabe Howell to start this ball game. The Bananas have been wanting to boost those trick play numbers a little bit. This one hit perfectly to him. And a perfect throw across the diamond to Eric Jones Jr. Retires Reese Lightning. How about this? Ryan Kellogg and Bill Arroy throwing behind the back of Noah Fisher. The man out of Madison Heights, Michigan, with a 1-0 count on him. He's been hitting cleanup in each of the nine games of his banana ball career until tonight. He gets elevated up into the two hole. And quickly now behind in the count one and two after two straight strikes from Kellogg. And Fisher had a really hot start in Tampa Bay. Has kind of cooled off in Peoria and did as well in Savannah here. Still has not fared well against Kellogg with a couple of strikeouts. We'll see if he can get the big knock here. Ryan wanted the strikeout, so did over. 9,500 fans here in Duval County who have patiently waited out Mother Nature. Now this one plopped into shallow right and tracking it down, Danny Hosley for out number two. Yeah, great job by Danny Hosley. Had a really good jump on that ball in right field and it looked like it just might have enough to kind of sneak into that no man's land and drop in for a base hit. But Hosley called off Olsen and Jones who were both tracking that ball out there in right field and came up with that out. So now Jake Skoll, first rounder from 2010 when the Texas Rangers nabbed him. Finished up his seven year minor league baseball career with two in the New York Yankees system. Four years of power five football at UGA followed. 11 second inning for Ryan Kellogg out there on the mound. Awfully efficient, it's three of the party animals best with the ground out, fly out and K ladder of which you get another look at a pinch of the Kellogg celebration here's the swing and miss skull well out in front and there is the boogie let's get a look at the party animals defensive alignment as they try and keep the Nanners off the board here in the first in the outfield left to right it's Tanner Thomas then Hampton and skull third to first in the infield Dustin Baber Chase Acuff check that Bryson Bloomer Chase Acuff then Dustin Baber Jason Swan at first Behind the plate, it is Dalton Cornett, and towing the slab is Sean Flew. Yeah, Dustin Baber entered last weekend series in Savannah with the tour lead in trick plays, but was surpassed by Ryan Cox. Now he finds himself three behind Coxie when it comes to the tour leaderboard, and he'd like a big game tonight with Sean Fluke on the mound. Chase Acup, on the other hand, had a pretty good series in Savannah himself. He's three behind his good friend Dustin Baber. And you've always got to look out for Bryson Bloomer, his third start here at third base on the tour. And he had 40 trick plays for the Animals. He's got a great chance to get that first one here tonight. Let's zoom in on the shirtless Sean Fluke on the mound. He is currently clothed up top. Here are his numbers across three starts this year. He was awesome a tour ago. He's been even better in 2024. I mean, he was awesome the last time out for the party animals. Four and two-thirds innings pitch, six hits allowed, and only two runs that were earned against Fluky, and set a season high in strikeouts as well with four. Let's get a quick glimpse at the Bananas lineup here if we have the time to do it. D.R. Meadows, the only man to swing it at the top. If he leaves the yard, the inning is over. Behind him, Gabe Howell and Dan Oberst, and Michael Deeb, the extra hitter in the cleanup spot for a fourth straight game. And her center fielder was mic'd up with Fluke in Savannah last weekend. They had a lot of fun jarring back and forth. D.R. ended up 
looping a 12-6 curveball into left field for a base hit. Yeah, and DR's always hit Sean Fluke very well and hit well in the first innings of ball games as well. A 391 mark last year, enters in in 2024, batting 556 in the first inning this year, and will try and get it boosted yet again. This one falling in front of Reese Hampton. The Bananas leadoff man on once again. Well, as far as qualified hitters go, the Vidalia Georgia native is pacing everybody in batting average. He's hitting 457 on the tour. That was going into that plate appearance. He's three for five in stolen base attempts. And now Gabe Howell at the dish, which is that one firing just a tad low. Enters third baseman. Hitting 241 on this young tour with one double as the count evens up. Back up the middle base knock for Gabe. Meadows goes station to station. Hampton's got a great arm. Ball got to him quickly. And the first two Nanners with singles. Couple ducks on the pond now for Dan Oberst. And this is the kind of start the Bananas were looking for. Again, we've seen a lot of these games, pitchers duels early on, but the Bananas had a pretty big team meeting over the course early in this week, talking about how to hit Sean Fluke. Now Dan Oberst will send this one off of the warning track in center field, and DR Meadows is going to come around and score three batters into the ball game for the Bananas offensively, and they've got a point in this game. Dan Oberst with his tour leading sixth walk off. And the Nanders DH back to the dugout, bat still in hand. Fired up to give his Nanners a one point lead, one inning into our rain delayed ball game. Another look at the blast. That is 420 feet to dead center field. That thing's a home run in pretty much every other baseball stadium in the United States. 420 to center is no joke. So the Nanners up a point, one inning in. And Kellogg back out on the bump. We'll have four, five, and six. Dalton Cornett, Bryson Bloomer, and Tanner Thomas do to swing it as incredible as the first three are for the party animals it does not get any easier when you get into four five and six in that lineup Cornette the man out of Pippa Passes Kentucky Catching tonight, leading off the frame in his third world tour, all of them with the animals. As Kellogg offers his final warm-up pitch via the hockey stick. A little kick save and a beauty from Bill Leroy. And we'll see what we have here from DC3, who is pacing his team with the 410 batting average you see right there. Same with his 415 on base percentage. How about this? Coming from the stands, we have a couple men in green warp suits here. We're gonna piggyback, ride themselves to the mound. Seems like these green men have made their way southeast from Vancouver and are now trying to distract the pride of Whitby, Ontario. Does not work, Kellogg fires a heater in at the knees of Cornette. Those green men are totally not saving his life right now. That is for sure. That one up, count one and one on DC3. Nice split from one green man as we get the worm from another. They are staying active behind the mound as Cornette blasts it deep out to right center. Too much launch angle though as Hosley will cut in front of Meadows. 
And the Green Men do not succeed in their dream of distracting Ryan Kellogg. Yeah, and boy, I think the crowd was really feeding off of the Bananas energy. I feel like they felt a little tense for Ryan Kellogg out there behind the mound. A huge cheer, an eruption of cheers when Danny Hosley was able to catch that ball in right center field. That thing was hit a mile high. About 390 plus feet out into right center. Grayson Bloomer, the donut hitter, denies the fans sweet confectionist treats at least at this juncture. That's the first party animal to reach against Kellogg tonight. And Bryson Bloomer's first hit of the tour. Yeah, and Bloomer was talking about not necessarily feeling incredibly comfortable last weekend as he was making his banana ball return. Says that it's been a process for him. He's really just been trying to get used to his routine again in the box when it comes to banana ball. Here, it's gotta feel good for him now to get that very first hit of 2024. Bloomer leads off first, has not attempted a steal, and is still not 100% when it comes to running as he continues his recovery from off-season surgery. He was 19 for 24 in stolen base attempts last year as Tanner Thomas keeps this one fair. Nice bounce off the right field wall. Hosley thinks about throwing towards second. Instead, will put a beautiful strike into the middle of Leroy at the dish. And after four straight retired to start Kellogg's night, a single, a double, and the party animals threatening here in the second. And the hits keep coming for Tanner Thomas as well, leading the party animals in OPS plus and leading them in doubles as well for that matter. He's an extra base hit machine for these guys. Chase Acuff having a terrific start to his tour. Second with the animals, their shortstop hitting 306 with an identical on base percentage as he lines this one Oh, nice leaping catch by Rack. Bloomer tags, he will score easily. It'll be a sack fly on a laser beam off the bat of Acuff, and the animals have a run here in the second. And that is a massive catch from Rack in left field. I mean, did not get the jump he wanted and just had to leap in the air to try and keep the ball in front of him, is able to get it in the glove. And really smart base running from Bryson Bloomer at third base as well making sure that Rack did indeed possibly catch that ball before tagging and scoring there. And so it's the party animals who are able to respond here in the top of the second. And here is another one of our Duval County natives, Garrett Delano out of Callahan, Florida. Third year with the party animals after being a collegiate banana in 2018. Slow tapper towards third. Howell in pursuit and takes care of Delano. But single, double, sack fly with one away go the party animals. They get a run and the Nanners will need one run to tie the inning, two runs to win it as you get another gander at the fine play by Howell at third. And out on the mound for his second inning of work, Sean Fluke with the mic on him. How are you living tonight, my friend? Oh, well, that might have been the quickest loss of an inning I have ever had in my life. Ugh. Yeah, these bananas had a team meeting trying to figure uh, out how to hit you. Trust me, I know. And I thought I could go like reverse, reverse psychology and just throw all heaters. But obviously, that didn't work out very well. <laughs> they were ready for the heaters. Dude, they were freaking ready, man. I hate it. <laughs> okay, well, now you've got four, five, six, and we'll be expecting a little oh. more off speed from you. Oh, yeah, that plan, you just throw that plan out the window. Awful game plan by me. <laughs> like, I can hit 79 mile an hour fastballs. So it's going to be Deeb Hosley and Jones Jr potential to face face Cruz, but you're hoping to just have a little three up, three down here. Oh yeah, now we're gonna go to work. That pissed me off a little bit, that first one, I'm not gonna lie. Ah. Deeb's having a good start to his tour. This is a guy hitting 348 of 429 on base percentage. What's the key to retiring fourth year banana here in world tour land? Well, the key would be, like I said last time, stop telling me how good these guys are. Yeah, that's my bad. <laughs> no, you're good. That's my bad. Uh, I'm gonna go change up first pitch. 
He's probably gonna spit on it, so I'm just gonna throw it right down the middle. He doesn't like to swing at it. That sounds great to me. Uh, we go cutter. All right, DC. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> Flirting with the outside corner. Yeah. Oh, inside Peter. Here we go. Whew. Beat him to the spot. Inside, but that was right down the middle. <laughs> Let's work. Here we go. Deucey deuce. Ah, yep. Yeah, oh boys, Vince. That's a good call, Vince. That's a beautiful pitch. Change up. Winner of tonight's sing-off is... Attaboy. Trick play. Go for the trick play, Fluke. I, I was nervous. Yep. I'm not going to lie. I really thought about it. <laughs> I just wanted him to like get really close like he had a chance. But I can't box this in. I just screwed up for the boys in the first. Is that strategy as well for you, Fluke? You want these guys to, to lose some hope with you, thinking that they can get to the bag there? Oh. Yep. I'm sorry. <laughs> DC gave me the wrong pitch, and Hosley loves sitting on that deuce. I'm like, let's not do that. Yeah, change piece, a little sidearm action. Why not? <laughs> oh, good eye. Sidearm changeup. Dude, I'm not kidding. Like, I go sidearm, like, in the middle of my windup. I'm like, yeah, screw it. Let's go sidearm. I'm going to do it again. Oh, good take. That was supposed to be outside, but that was still not a bad pitch. I can't see his fingers. <laughs> yep. Oh! Freeze him! Freeze him! Big bender. Connor, I'm going to throw this one super slow. Oh, my God. Oh, good thing you threw idea. it super slow. Hey, that's a strike. You're lucky this, too. <laughs> hey! You talk that crap! I'm gonna sit you down, boy! 12 steps to the dugout! I'm gonna throw this one as hard as I can. Fastball. Ah! Oh. <laughs> He's early on it. Oh man, that hurt. <laughs> Alright, no more throwing as hard as you can, Fluke. That's oh, not I your game, baby. Oh, we're back. We're back. He threw that so hard, he lost the mic. I know. I want to do it again. It felt great. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> ah! Oh, that actually had some zip on it. What's the count? I forget. I'm doing so much yelling. Full count. Oh, game. God. What am I doing? Cutter. Yep. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> oh, Vincent. That's a little up, I guess. Oh, oh no. What are we doing? Meltdown. Chase bobbles the first offering. Hosley trying to get two bases. Oh, he almost. He does. Oh, oh. The ball. Yeah, that's a good catch, Fluke. Good catch. Ah. Everybody at home wondering, ball four is fired. All seven fielders behind the pitcher and pitcher have to touch it before it's live. So because of the boof there from Acuff, Hosley gets two bases. Come on, Fluke. We got to win this. He represents the inning tying run. Eric Jones Jr. represents the inning winning run in the box. Ah. Make a play. Acuff. Ah, let's go. See you later, Hosley. Hey, Hosley! Hosley! Talk that crap, baby! Hosley! Flap away, Bubba! Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Sean Fluke, heck of a job tying this game. Hey, let's go to work. Come on. Hey, that's my dog right there. That's my dog. There goes Mr. Undeniable. We get another look at the double play started by Acuff. And... Let's get it down to Maceo Harrison and the boys. When they're done dancing, we'll have the mic on Robert Anthony Cruz. Phenomenal work by Maceo Harrison, DJ the Invader, Noah Nisnik,
Malachi Mitchell and Christian Dearman. As promised, Robert Anthony Cruz with the mic on him. How is left field treating you? So far, so good, man. Just chatting it up with some kiddos out here. It's a good time. Rack, how about that catch last inning? You know, the last minute leap in the air to haul that thing in. How did that one feel for you? Pretty good, man. Channeled my inner acrobat on that one. I enjoyed it. <laughs> I don't feel for you because those are the toughest balls to judge they as are. outfielders. Line drive straight at you. I know. I thought it was going to land in front of me, and then it did not. <laughs> Kellogg attacking this one under his leg. The first trick play in the banana ball career of Ryan Kellogg takes care of Faber. Knew that he had the comeback a right to him. He lets out a little fist bump after completing the trick play there and knew that he had the perfect time to go between the legs and retire Dustin Faber. That's a special one for Kellogg. It's 9-10-1 here for the animals. So here is the 10 hitter Jason Swan, the Jacksonville kid. Having an excellent start to his second world tour. We talk about first trick plays. Rack, can you talk us through your first trick play you had this past Sunday? Yeah, well, the ball went up and it was a can of corn. Oh, kind of like that. I mean, who knows what DR is going to do here? You never know what DR is going to do. It's that. That's ridiculous. He backflips and catches the ball. Now, as a gymnast, I'm sure that's one that you've been working on, Rack. You know, that's correct. This week, I landed my very first one in practice. So you feel confident that you can pull out the backflip trick play catch in a game this season? I think it will It will definitely come this season. I mean, if I get an opportunity tonight, I just might try it. What about with this batter right now? I've been strictly given orders to not do trick plays on Reese Hampton because he's so dang good at hitting the baseball. So <laughs> I will probably just catch it on this one. Um, so Gilly, don't get too mad. Um, otherwise, I would, though. Yeah, that's fair enough. That's situational banana ball right there. That's right. Speaking of which, three balls, we got to creep in a little bit. Yes. I feel like I should make a video on that. Some banana ball, each banana ball strategy. Yeah, there's a lot you could do with that, and thanks to you hustling in, the seventh and final banana who had to touch the ball before it's live, the very speedy Reese Hampton only gets one base. Reese successful in his lone stolen base attempt on the tour. Fisher flew out to right his first time. And is plunked. Bender gets him on the knee, and he will have a little gyration. Now strutting his stuff to first. Hampton up to second. Two on with two out. Now Jake Skoll, who struck out swinging his first time. Another look at Hampton being plunked. Now we get... A fascinating matchup of a fifth round draft pick on the mound. First rounder at the dish. Kellogg wins the battle as we get a bounce throw to first. Jackson Olsen, his 11th trick play on the tour. Rack, can we keep you on the mic for your first at bat tonight? Yeah, why not? Let's do it. All right. Fascinating stuff. Could you possibly walk us through? You know what? No. We'll let you relax. We've got a brand new promotion. It's the cheese touch. We have to see this naturally. We'll pull you back in in a second, Rack. Sounds good. Now, the point of this promo, we're going to have the boys here standing pretty while the wives grab some of this cheese and throw it at their partner. So, ladies and gentlemen, are we ready to see this? It's kind of weird. Gentlemen, something's not right, though. Take those shirts off. Ladies, get those arms ready. And let's hit them with some cheese. Oh, it sticks right on. Oh, my goodness. Human night tonight. Oh, bullseye. <laughs> Aiming a little low there. Here we go. Get the Swiss, get the Swiss. Wow. Harder. Oh, nice. Next shot. 
Here we go. Got more Provolo, more Swiss. Ten, nine, eight, Rachel seven, we need more six, cheese. five, four, three, two, one. Time. Wow. <laughs> all right. All right. So, what's our count up? What we got here? Okay, after the first ever cheese touch promotion, we bring Rack back into the broadcast. Robert Anthony Cruz, can you teach us how to hit Sean Fluke? Uh, gosh, I'm still trying to learn myself, man. Um, we got to sit back and wait. We know that. Do something up. That would have been a good one to swing at. <laughs> Not that one. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the big bender so, right there. Don't do that. I see you working back there, DC. All right. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. How about that? Sean Fluke is as funky as they come, and when he gives you the big bender and then gets you with that quick heat, he is yeah, tough. Yeah, I know, man. Sneaky, sneaky fast. Rack, good luck the rest of the night, my dear friend. I know we've got some highlights coming from you. Thanks so much, guys. Appreciate Thanks, it. Rack. So there goes Robert Anthony Cruz as Fluke very much spoils our fun. That was not nice of Sean Fluke at all. No, I mean, Flukey went with fastball, then goes breaking ball, and then goes back to the fastball there. Just never really got Cruz to really get a sense of the timing of pitches there. First K of the night for Fluke, who faced three batters in the first. Meadows, Howell, and Oberst went single, single, double. Bananas won the frame. And then Fluke faced three batters in the second. Deeb, Hosley, and Jones Jr. Went ground out, sprint, line drive, double play. Here's Reese Hampton in center. Behind his back, Reese has brought trick plays to a whole nother level here in 2024. That's his third of the tour. Trick play number three for Reese Hampton on this tour, and we've seen a variety of different ones. On the run behind his back, going under the leg, and now just takes that one high pop in the air and is still able to get it behind the back there. I mean, he really is on another level when we talk about the outfield trick plays, and he is only getting better. Again, this is a guy who is definitely has an offensive prowess, but it's the defense that wows you just as much at the same time. He was the best hitter on last year's tour, undeniably. And now all of a sudden, he is dynamic in the trick play department as well. Still three behind DR Meadows for the outfield lead. Meadows is six for six. With five backflips and a beautiful bow. As this one a loopy liner from Olsen's bat to Acuff's glove. One, two, three, go the bananas as Fluke holds serve. And it is still one point apiece with three innings behind us. And a pretty... And a pretty incredible third inning overall. I mean, we saw four trick plays from the Bananas and the Party Animals. There we go. And Ryan Kellogg threw his inning in two minutes and 52 seconds. Sean Fluke just posted a 2.08 mark himself. Banana Band blasting away, a wider split than we are used to being shown on the broadcast. This will be our first of three broadcasts here in Jacksonville. Of course, tonight we're supposed to have first pitch at 7 p.m. We'll go with that plan again tomorrow night, even though because of rain, we got our first pitch at 8.39 this evening. And then we have a Sunday 1 p.m. Eastern matinee, a banana ball day game on a Sunday for the second straight week. And then we go to Houston. Let's get a little gander at what we can expect from the first ever Major League Baseball Stadium to have banana ball at the center of it. Minute Maid Park is a beauty. Home of one of the most dominant Major League Baseball teams across the last decade. The Astros have a pair of World Series victories dating back to 2017. 
And it's going to be special to have H-Town as the home of the first ever banana ball game when it comes to an MLB stadium. Ryan Kellogg and Sean Fluke each only used 10 pitches to get through the third inning. We'll see if Banana Land's Big Maple can continue his efficient start as Vincent Chapman calls time. We'll dust off home plate. Toss away his face mask and boogie to the delight of the nearly 10,000 here in Jacksonville. And there it was from Vincent Chapman doing a couple different splits behind home plate there. I felt like he was teasing the crowd about doing it and finally hit a couple there. When the dust settles after his miraculous boogie, we'll have an 0-1 pitch coming to the Animals cleanup man. Cornette led off the second with a fly out deep to right center. And this one in on the hands, Olsen knocks it down, stays with it, and will get the out at first. Retiring one of the best college baseball players in the history of Alice Lloyd. Yeah, and Ryan Kellogg, again, you were talking about the pitch efficiency for him and Fluke in the third inning. Just 40 pitches so far in the night for Ryan Kellogg. Took him 84 pitches to get through four innings last Friday in Savannah. This is definitely more of what he was hoping for, and he definitely has a chance to go even deeper in this ball game as Bryson Bloomer takes the first pitch he gets from Ryan Kellogg and lines it past the dive of Gabe Howell there. It's Bloomer, two for two in this ball game early on. He came into the game hitting nothing but zeros. Two plate, ap two plate appearances later, he's hitting 400. Two for five on the tour. Using all fields. Bloomer with a healthy lead. Tanner Thomas doubled down the right field line. Sent Bloomer to third, who scored the lone run in the second inning on an A-cuff sack fly. Now a 2-0 count on the 2018 and 19 banana guy who began his collegiate career at Tallahassee Community College after two years in Juco, finished up with three at Virginia Tech. And has reverse splits, surprisingly, dating back to his days as a Hokie. Hits lefties better than righties. And a batting average above 300 against Kellogg a year ago. Comes up empty in a hitter's count, now it's run full. Yen batted 368 against left-handed pitching last season, just 284 against right-handed pitching. And here with the count full, this one is lined into right field, and it'll kick off of Danny Hosley's cleat as well. Bloomer, however, was gunning from third from the very start, so the windup is just a single there for Tanner Thomas. Party Animals at the corners. Thomas and Bloomer both two for two. And Acuff hits with a couple men aboard for the second time tonight. And a line drive barely snagged by Cruz his first time. It was the aforementioned sack fly. Could have been a lot more though had Robert Anthony not made a fine play. Kellogg checks on Thomas, who's 0 for 2 in his two tries to steal a base so far on this tour. But was tied for the party animals lead in stolen bases a year ago when he swiped 22. Acuff hangs tough, he'll get another 0-2. Look, and it's already big that Ryan Kellogg has jumped ahead of Chase Acuff 0-2. We know he's a very difficult batter to strike out. If I still have this many balls to play with, I'm going with a breaking ball low to Chase Acuff. Chase does the job, deep fly ball to center, Meadows grabs it, will throw it into second to prevent Thomas from advancing a base, but Bloomer jogs home. He scores his second run of the night as Acuff drives in his second 
and all of a sudden is tied for the tour lead with his two sacrifice flies. The animals celebrate with a bull riding celebration. I'm sure an homage to the Houston Rodeo that is currently underway. Now Garrett Delano who bounced out to third his first time. 0-1 count. Two one, there goes Thomas, it's bounced to short. Ryan Cox behind the back, to the bounce. Eric Jones Jr. behind the back himself. A double trick play, the greatest we've seen in banana ball history. A double trick play as Ryan Cox goes over the shoulder with the trick play, and it's the first time we have ever seen a first baseman receive the ball going 360 for the out. EJ, what a play! What a way to send us to Hey Baby. Three and a half innings in the books, each team with a point. The party animals push one run across in the top of the fourth. And if they'd like to grab their first lead in points tonight, they've got to keep the bananas off the board in the upcoming bottom half. Beautiful Hey Baby for the over 9,000 fans that stuck through an hour and 39 minute rain delay. But our game is cruising along. Three and a half frames behind us. Now it's gonna be the 10th spot in the order and the top of the order after Ryan Cox. Sierra Meadows on deck, Gabe Howell in the hole. Coxie the shortstop. Having a terrific start to his third world tour. The kid out of Aliquippa, Pennsylvania, hitting 304, a 385 on base percentage. He has a double, has driven in three runs, earned two ball four sprints, been hit by a pitch, and still has not struck out as his counterpart, Chase Acuff, comes up empty on the trick play attempt. Chase now 13 for 17 on the season. Yeah, just trouble for Chase Acuff. I think keeping the ball in the glove there, and as it was going, as he was trying to go between the legs, you see a little bit of a loss on the transfer there as well. So Ryan Cox able to reach, and again, he's been so productive in this ten hole because he continues to put balls in play. He's still yet to strike out on this 2024 tour. Now Dr. Meadows at the top. Lined the ball up the middle for a base knock his first time as Malachi Mitchell pinch runs for Cox at first. The designated runner for the Bananas can pinch run one time each trip through the order. Jordan Hussein maintains that spot in the Party Animals lineup as you get a look at Macy O'Harrison pulling off one of his signature dances. And we're back to Banana Ball as Malachi takes off. Throw from Cornette on the money. Flash gets in there. And Dustin Baber emphatically letting his dugout know they've got to pull the challenge. We'll see if the fans do it first. 
And Mike Pavesis will toss it out there. So Josh and I have to slap on the Riedel headsets. And we will chat with Vincent Chapman, as well as Zach Frangelo. Fellas, we have the Riedel headsets on. We'll be ready to rumble whenever you are. We've got you loud and clear, Vincent. Another look at the play at second here. The ball beat him. Can't tell if the tag's on him there. Let's check out this angle. Tough to tell there, too. Okay, one more look. Yeah, I don't see where Glove is touching hand here. No, we can, I think we can confirm the call on the field. Yes, it's certainly not irreversible. Or it certainly is irreversible. All right, call is confirmed, call stands. Call is confirmed, good work, fellas. And the party animals, naturally upset, Drew Gillespie and Isaac Hess putting their hands up looking at the booth. I just don't know how we could have overturned that call. Ball beat him. We didn't have a shot that showed Malachi Mitchell was tagged. So Flash. A perfect eight for eight on the tour in stolen base tries, leading all base runners. And now the best hitter on the tour thus far, DR Meadows, with a great chance to put the bananas back in front in the all important points department. That's not gonna do it there. Malachi still at third as the innings tying run. Meadows with excellent speed is now at first as the inning winning run. And he'll pass the baton to Gabe Howell, who singled his first time. Yeah, and it's not something the Bananas are going to be upset at all about. DR Meadows continues to extend this inning. Malachi just 90 feet away. And really, the decision to pinch run Malachi for Ryan Cox was simply to make sure that they could tie this inning at least. And if Gabe Howell can put this one in play and possibly collect the sack fly like Chase Acuff has tonight, Bananas are going to accomplish that goal. Howell fouls that off sharply. Blister the ball back up the middle for a single his first time. Nearly took the head off of Sean Fluke. No outs in the inning. Excellent speed on both corners for the Bananas as Gabe hits this a mile high. Skull setting up behind it. Malachi taking off, gets a big stop sign. Gillum actually was impeding his way home. Now Flash is coming home. Flip from Fluke, not in time! Inning tied at a run each. That was a perfect throw home from Jake Skull. The only problem was Dalton Cornett got body in front of it and did not get glove it or ball in glove there. So ricochets away from Cornett and Tyler Gillum halfway up the line with Flash then gave him the wave, told him to go, go, go. And he's able to come in and score this inning tying run. Another look at the ball deflecting away from Cornett and the scamper home from Flash. Speed kills. Another one trickles away from DC3, but not far enough for Meadows to advance to second. As Oberst rolls this one over, Bloomer to second for one, Baber to first. And the party animals go around the horn to turn two. Five, four, three, double play. The inning ends one run each. The game is still locked at a point each. Great reaction from Bryson Bloomer and a good double play overall that saved Sean Fluke in this fourth inning. You watch the double play one more time and then we'll get it down to Jolie Chabala to shout out our Bananas Foster Family of the Night. To raise awareness and celebrate the foster care community, we created a nonprofit called Bananas Foster. 
Our organization is dedicated to celebrating the foster care community while educating and inspiring others to get involved. Tonight we are celebrating the Joneses family. The parents in this family are educators, saw a need, and became a licensed foster family in 2020. Since then, they have welcomed children from six months old to teenagers. In total, they have welcomed 20 children and teens into their home. Fans, please help us celebrate the Joneses family for making a difference right here in the Florida foster care community. Is one of the greatest moments every night in Banana Land when we get the group hug with the Bananas Foster family of the evening at the center of it all. Tonight, in the middle of it all, with love swirling around them, is the Jones family. Both parents in the education system saw the need firsthand. And after becoming licensed in 2020, have already welcomed 20 children into their home. And what's really unique is they're welcoming children as young as six months old to children who are the age of teenagers. It, it is very cool. I mean, you never really know how to prepare for the people who are going to get placed with you, but clearly they've done a tremendous job. Also pretty cool, Cowboy Kyle Lewis coming in to pitch this top of the fifth inning. So Ryan Kellogg done after four frames. And now Cowboy Kyle will make the second relief appearance of his banana ball career. Yeah, this is the same plan the Bananas had last Friday. Kellogg going four and then bringing in Cowboy Kyle. And he pitched pretty well in two innings of relief. Racked up three strikeouts. He did give up an earned run. But overall, Kyle wildly effective out there on the mound. And he really feels like he's just taking on an even greater leadership role. He has not been upset one bit about being moved from the starting rotation into this bullpen role. He just wants to do whatever is best for this Bananas team to get wins. And it obviously was reflected last weekend in Savannah. Kyle, one of three Bananas to play four years collegiately. The other, his catcher, currently Iris jigging with Dustin Baber. That would be Bill Leroy. And... Ryan Kennedy, Southpaw, who helped the Bananas win back-to-back -back Coastal Plain League championships in 2021 and 22. The only man who collegiately threw more innings than Cowboy Kyle. Lewis was a reliever for the majority of his first three years in Banana Land, and one of the aces of the 2021 championship team alongside Kennedy and Joe Miller three-headed monster that was big-time trouble for the CPL. Justin Baber fouls that one off, top of the zone. Count even at two and two on the animal second baseman. And look, he's always been a pitcher who's been built for banana ball, has always maintained a strikeout to walk ratio that's at least two strikeouts to every sprint or better. And so far that is staying true here early in 2024. That one just misses the bottom of the zone. Kyle thought he had a strikeout looking. All he can do is smile and deliver a payoff that's tapped back to him. He fakes the trick play underneath the leg. We'll throw a seed on over to EJ. And smiles galore as Luix has one out. Yeah, Kyle just having fun after receiving that comebacker. Thought he was going to do a long snap all the way over to Eric Jones Jr., but this is the classic <laughs> Kyle fake out. What a, what a strike to EJ. A BTV prank from one of our beloved members. Now Jason Swan at the bottom of the animal's order. Cranks that one foul. 
And not caught by a fan. Bryson Wheeler, the first base umpire, had a great view of it. Just a strike on the Jacksonville kid who flew out into a backflip catch from Meadows in center. Now DR coming in with Olsen, Cox, and Kyle for a line dance before the 0-1 offering. Leroy taking a full trip around Chapman and another foul ball, 0-2 now on Swan. Because I'll tell you what, after that first foul ball from Jason Swan, this Jacksonville crowd really wanted that to, that to be called a fan caught foul ball. And they have been behind the bananas since we arrived in this joint. I'll tell you what, they have booed the party animals nonstop in this ball game. Kyle's got another comebacker. This time he is going to hike it. EJ goes behind his back for the second time in banana ball history. Also, the second time tonight. Two straight innings with double trick plays for the bananas. Cowboy Kyle faked the snap. This time got it off in time to EJ. And he nails the reception yet again, holding the bag. <laughs> yeah, wow, <laughs> come on. Are you kidding me? This is the 123rd ever banana ball game. And within two innings, you saw the first two behind the back trick plays from a first baseman ever, ever. This game never, sim it simply never ceases to amaze. I like. Do you like goats? I like goats. Terrific. Reese Hampton, the switch hitter, turns around to hit from the left side for the first time tonight. Kyle just misses the outside corner. Bill thought it was strike two. Instead, it's ball three. Reese with the ground out and has reached on a sprint. The count now full on him. See, this is what is also another luxury for Cowboy Kyle coming out of the pen. Had such a tough time with the party animals top of the order. Got to start this frame facing the bottom half. Dustin Baber in the nine spot and Jason Swan in the 10 spot. And here, chance for the fans to possibly catch that Reese Hampton foul ball that was going towards kind of this berm that's right past that left field foul line. But fans in hot pursuit just couldn't come up with the catch in the end. Another payoff, another foul ball towards foul territory off the left side. Cox taking control and makes the catch as he falls on top of Robert Anthony Cruz. One, two, three frame for Cowboy Kyle. And here comes a post inning performance. Leroy Lewix, take it away fellas. There we go. Oh, 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 oh. There hey, we we're on 
muted about this photo finish up here as well. We nailed it. Everybody's having fun. Everyone's having fun in Banana Land. Uh, we have a special guest joining this broadcast. Heck of a four and a half innings of Banana Ball. Jason Swan, you having fun tonight in Jazz? What's up? Oh, yeah. Back in the hometown, baby. Loving it. Now, you're born and raised here. You know what Duval's all about. How cool is it to get to bring Banana Ball to Jacksonville for the second straight year? It's awesome. You're seeing this uh, stadium light up, all the fans going crazy. We had that rain delay, and they all stayed, uh, stuck it out. It's amazing. Jason, did you have any cool moments with the fans during the rain delay at all? Uh, no, I didn't because it was like a lightning delay, so we couldn't really get out there. But, uh, I mean, my family's like right above my dugout and all my friends, so they're, they're lit right now, having a good time. Did you bring Devin Hester to this one? No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. I wish. Jethro he could, he could Pugh? Run. Is Jethro Pugh here? No, he's not here. <laughs> Andy Walker. No, Andy Andy they're Walker. in New York. All right, fair enough. Yeah. We, yeah. we always got to check in on them. Oh, yeah, I wish they could come down. Devin Hester actually could be our, uh, our flash. <laughs> Swan, our people in the control room as Michael Deeb gets up to the dish, Sean Fluke out for his fifth inning of work, are wondering what GATA means to you. Uh, do you want uh, the explicit version or the academic version? We would like the academic version, okay. I think, as get, af get after those academics. Oh, baby! Wow! <laughs> Reese Hampton! That's the second one! That guy's out of his mind! <laughs> Reese Hampton is going crazy at center baby. field for the animals oh, yeah. on the run once again. Catches it behind the back. Is there anything this guy can't do? He does it all, baby. Swanee, we've seen two terrific trick plays from your counterpart, EJ, at first. Do you yeah. have anything in your back pocket here? Is I got to get me one. And, like, I haven't had a ground ball hit. Oh, no, no, no. Keep it at two, keep it at two. He's going three. And he's there. Yeah, he, there's no chance yeah. to get Hosley. That's a three-base trick play miss for Drake. Sorry, Fluke's going to get us out of this. Jake Skull. Fluke got us. Yeah, that's a yeah. tough one when it's the inning-winning run. Yeah, right. It's okay. Okay, yeah, not the, but the data get, that you can share on a broadcast to the masses. Get after those academics. Oh, my. Yes. That's peace. I might get out of here. Oh, wow. Laser beam, two-run, inning walk-off smash for Eric Jones, Jr. That was a quick inning, guys. Swanee, we can't thank you enough for getting <laughs> mic'd up, dude. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. Our pleasure. All right. Only four pitches here in the inning for Sean Fluke, and EJ timed up the breaking ball perfectly. Set this over the short wall in left field. And Biko in batting practice today, EJ was spraying balls out of this ballpark to left, center, and right field, and finally connects for his first home run of 2024. That one's got to feel great. It gets a little Greatest Showman cosplay action for his blast. Tour leader in homers last year with a dozen. Former Mariners and Twins minor leaguer. Shows us once again that both those teams made an absolutely silly mistake in not keeping that guy in their organization. Swan watches it go out, gives us his call. We tip our caps to all the military members, both past and present, here in 121 Financial Ballpark. All of us at BTV pass that on. To those watching at home, happy Big Tiger Friday to you. Thank you for your service. And shocking news to myself and my partner Josh Tolevsky, there are still a couple cabins open on Banana Land Etsy. Less than 100, but there's still a couple. So we're just here to remind you about what that experience could be like should you choose to go cruising with us. Banana Land started as a stadium. Then it spread coast to coast. Banana Land has become a magical place where the players, cast, and fans come together to let loose and have fun. Who said we had to keep Banana Land on land? What if we took Banana Land out to sea? Hang out with the bananas, the party animals, and the entire cast. 
non-stop entertainment, daily challenges, and a whole lot of dancing. Well, you can look at it there. That is how you get involved. Look, Kapchka for all the folks at home with a phone that can dial into our code. I'm going to be there, John. Rumor has it I'm going to be there, too. Yeah, I'm fired up. It'll be my first ever cruise. Let's get it down to the party animals. They've got a specialty walk-up to kick off the sixth inning. They need a mic that works. And here we go. In the case of the first batter of the inning, Jake Lealios. You are not the batter. <laughs> Jake Lealios thrilled that he does not have to take this at bat. Noah Fisher apoplectic that he does have to hit his spot in the order, the two hole. And he's behind 0-1. Cowboy Kyle with a 90 mile an hour heater on the black, according to Trackman. And Fisher says, well, we'll just serve this one into left center. Base it's, knock, he's one for two. It's a good thing he was the batter, I would say. Correct. Not sure what Lealios would have done up there. There's nothing better than being a kid, having a sick day, staying home from school, turning on that TV. Just catching up with Maury. I didn't have cable, so it's an experience only one of us has lived as Jake Skull sends this deep out to left field. How about the oppo pop? A Skull smash, his second of the tour. And two runs just like that here in the sixth for the Animals. And I'm telling you what, if Jake Skull has anything to say about it, this place is going to be further known as Jakesonville. He rakes here in 1-2-1 one, one Financial Ballpark in three games here in Jacksonville. Three home runs for Jake Skull. He's a monster. Two of them oppo tacos. If anyone's thirsty, Jake's got the juice. Rack didn't have a chance. Skull goes back to Nail the celebration with his first base coach, Anthony Coromato. And now Dalton Cornette will swing it. The proverbial bloop and a blast, except it was a line drive base knock and a blast. And now Cornette, who has flown out and grounded out, will try and keep the hot start to the inning going. Instead, he flies it to Meadows in center. And what only stand out, stands out more from that home run from Jake Skull and touching on the three that he's hit here in this ballpark, two of the three have gone out to the opposite field. I mean, he is unbelievable at being able to drive the ball to all fields with that pop. And now he has taken the outright tour lead in home runs with two. He knew it off the bat. Jake knew it off the bat for that matter. Left center field, that thing was a doozy. Bryson Bloomer, two for two on the night, two well-struck singles. His first two hits of the tour, and his only third game played after recovering from off-season off surgery. This one rolled over, Cox between the legs, across the diamond, no scoop from Eric Jones Jr. So it will go as a trick play missed for the glove magician. Only his third in 23 tries. Yeah, Ryan Cox nailed the transfer there, something he is probably the best out of any infielder in banana ball, but came up with that throw a little short, and EJ looked like he was set up, going to be able to pick that one. Just couldn't get it in the glove, so party animals have a chance to continue to score more runs in this inning and try and knot this game back up at two points apiece. Here's the tour leader in extra base hits, Tanner Thomas. Five doubles, tied with Hampton for the lead there. He's got one home run to add on top. 2-0 count, it's Bill Leroy. 
is flying off screen to try and grab that ricochet. Long wait from Lewigs. This one shanked the other way. Howell makes the call in the catch in foul territory. Big second out for Cowboy Kyle as Chase Acuff struts up to the plate. Chase O for O. Sack flies to left and right to drive in Bloomer. First in the second, then in the fourth. For an inning winning run and an inning tying run that prevented a Bananas victory in the fourth inning. Yeah, and those are productive outs. Chase Acuff and the party animals have not are not going to be upset about those by any means. Now it's just time for Acuff to see if he can tack on an extra base hit and a third run batted in in this ball game. That one out of one to one financial ballpark. So uncatchable for the fans. Kyle, a strike away from limiting the damage to two runs. And Acuff, as he does, battles, sends that one out of the premises. Slow roller. Howell throws it away. So Bloomer, who reached on the trick play missed, will end up at third base. Acuff at first. On the fourth error of the tour for Gabe Howell, and Garrett Delano could make this inning far uglier. Yeah, and it looked like on that play, Gabe Howell, as he was charging the ball, couldn't decide if he was going to use glove or go bare hand there on the play. Decided for the former and puts glove on ball, shovels it out, and then EJ was trying to come off the bag, try and block that ball as he saw it getting away from Howell, but unfortunately could not. So. Party Animals still with a chance to tag on more runs here against Cowboy Kyle in the sixth inning. Broken bat, Ryan Cox under the leg. Second trick play of the night. Ends the inning at two runs. Both driven in by Jake Skoll with his booming opposite field home run. The Landers will need two runs to tie the inning, three runs to win it as you get another look at the Cox trick play. Let's get it down to the young professor for a promo we call Wet Your Pants. It's on my side. Now, Noah Bridges, what do we got over there on your side? What's up, everybody? We got Jay right here. His parents told me he's a professional bedwetter, so now it's his time to shine. <laughs> I got Krim up here. Uh -huh. He's going to throw the balloons. Let's get this thing rocking. Let's go. Well, let one who gets the most balloons in the pants wins. On your mark, get set, go. All right, imagine you're in bed. Oh, there's one. one. Right out of there. Oh, that's one. You're doing good. Here we go for two. In hot. Two, baby, two. Can Got we get it. three? Three. Can we get four? Four. That counted. We have uh, nothing. Some minutes. We got four. We have one. Two. Ah, still four. Come on. All right, we need to regroup. Imagine you're in bed and you're having a dream. That's two. Okay? Five, five. Uh, three. Come on. Six, baby. Come on. You're doing good. You're doing good. You're having a scary Eight. dream. A scary dream is you got a full platter. Eight. Seven. Seven, Eight, six, nine. Here. Come on, baby, get the ten. Yeah, Three, ten. Two, eleven. One. Come on. Time. Yeah. Oh. Noah, we've got seven over here. What do you got? Like I said, his mama said he's a professional bad wetter. We got eleven, baby. Take it home, first base side. Give it up for Noah. The boy Jay. Wet your pants. Well, now that. Gentlemen's pants have been properly wetted. Dalton Ponce will make his fourth relief appearance of his young banana ball career. He has 7 8 9 for the bananas. Robert Anthony Cruz, Bill Leroy, and Jackson Olsen. A couple social media superstars, the co captain of Banana Land, sandwiched in between. And a couple things worth noting here as we get started in this bananas half of the sixth inning. Noah Bridges, of course, still slated to pinch hit at some point in this game. And it's kind of going to factor in in another sense is Malachi Mitchell. 
got hurt sliding into home plate earlier in this ball game, has had to come out of the game to get stitches. And so the Bananas will not have a designated runner in this ball game. And how about this? Rack sends this one out to deep right center field. It ricochets off the wall. And he thought this one might leave one to one financial ballpark instead. Turns on the Jets and gets into second base with the leadoff double. Big, booming hit from Rack. Second double of the tour, third extra base hit. Hampton not able to make the jumping catch. And two batters into the inning. The frames tying run at the plate, Bill Leroy. Video game numbers, nine games into the season. And a deep drive turned into a trick play by Hampton in center his first time. Bill's 588 on base percentage coming into the game, pacing all hitters. As Dalton Ponce, as Baber, Acuff, and Hampton all participating in a wonderful 6-2-2. Choreographed dance now, the pitch popped up right side. And Skull will make the call in the snag for out number one. And just to finish up on that Malachi Mitchell situation, he has come out of the game, will need stitches, and the Bananas will not have a designated runner in this ball game anymore. Anyone who comes in to run will be a pinch runner, and usually Noah Bridges is the guy who is getting those opportunities after Flash the Kid. With Bridges coming in to hit at some point, I'd assume the next man up to pinch run for the Bananas, probably Reese Alexiades. Brandon Crosby available as well. One one count on Jackson Olsen. Has to look out for four seam and two seam fastballs, a change up slider and 12 6 curveball from Dalton Ponce, the pride of Fontana, California, just like Cruz, who leads off second base. Opposite field, good poke from Olsen, but on the track, Thomas grabs it. 315 feet from the plate. And Ponce one out away from winning the inning. How about this? For the first plate appearance of the season for Noah Bridges, naturally, he's gotta have a special trip to home plate. Good to see a decent amount of the Bananas pitching staff involved in the fun with Bridges here. A kid out of Four Oaks, North Carolina. Second tour with the Nanners. Spent all five years collegiately at UNC Wilmington. There's a Wilmington Shark competing against the Bananas in the Coastal Plain League. Comes up empty on the cutter. And ready for an 0-2 here. Cranked diving catch! Jason Swan robs Bridges of extra bases, and the party animals claim the point available here in the sixth. Just a brutal way to end your very first at bat. Bridges with a barrel down that first baseline, and a great reaction time from Jason Swan as you get to see it one more time, laying out and coming out with a phenomenal diving catch to get the party animals their second point in this ball game. We are all tied up through six. While the Banana Nanas boogie down on the field, as we head to the seventh inning, that means we have reached our Zappos free pair of shoes giveaway frame. Fill out all the relevant info once you click the link in the comment section on this broadcast.
And where it says buzzword, you want to put paradise. That will be paradise. Which is exactly where we are right now with the Nanas doing their thing. The Banana Nanas, stupendous as they always are, and now out for his third inning of relief. A guy very familiar about pitching in Jacksonville. Cowboy Kyle Lewis, after his four and a half years spent at the University of North Georgia, finished up at Jacksonville State. That would be Jacksonville, Alabama. A chug of the old brew from Baber. And we're ready to start the seventh inning as he passes Vincent Chapman's very weak sobriety test. I've gotten a couple of those in my tenure here in Banana Land. I also have yet to fail. Helps when the person running the test is in a worse state than you are. Good battle here between Lewigs and Baber. Counts to one and two. Yeah, Baber tank hanging tough here against Cowboy Kyle. We've seen Bill and Kyle continue to set up outside to Baber, and they're going to try it one more <laughs> time as Vincent Chapman, what a wacky series of events, tries to catch the ball ricocheting off the net behind home plate in the umpire's mask and then takes a mighty tumble. And, of course, Bill roy has got to egg him on a little bit with a tumble of his own. So nice. You get to see it twice. You see the good, and then all of a sudden he's on the ground. Makes his own safe call. Well, that guy likes to have fun. And Baber does a good job spoiling that one, and redemption for Vincent Chapman! Banana ball is a beautiful thing. Oh my! back-to-back -back pitches and Vincent's on top of the world I saw the people right behind the stands here behind home plate instantly get up to their feet and applaud Vincent Chapman for that one good work there by Lewis continues to pound the zone the Richmond Hill kid comes up with his first strikeout in two and a third now frames pitch in relief of Ryan Kellogg Jason Swan, Sans jersey. Ready to rumble out of the 10 hole. He has flown out and grounded out tonight. So that one just misses the bottom of the zone, I guess. I don't, I don't think so, but that's gonna be the call on the field. That one did miss outside, count two and up. Inclement weather pun incoming. Jason Swan is tarps off right now. Atta boy. This really screws himself into the dirt on the 2-0 offering. Trying to double his home run total on the tour. That one struck well to center, but Meadows right there. And how about the trick play? Leaping behind his back. No look necessary. Second trick play of the night for Meadows. DR Meadows kind of taking a page out of the, the book of Reese Hampton going behind the back and making that catch. Unbelievable snack. The 12th trick play we've seen in this ball game tonight. And now we've got Tyler Gillum introducing Dakota Stilts all Britain to the mound. And boy, Biko, we have the immense honor of welcoming him into tonight's broadcast. Yo, what's up, Biko? Dakota, how are you feeling tonight, Big oh, Tiger? Oh, man, you know, on top of the world, baby. 
Okay, what is the plan here trying to attack one of the greatest hitters in banana ball history? Uh, come at him from up top and uh, get him to fly out or ground out. I think that's an excellent plan. You got some of your friends and family from Ellaville, Georgia in attendance tonight? Uh, no, sir. My uh, fiance Haley and my mom will be here tomorrow. Well, they're actually coming in tonight, so I'm excited to see them. I was wondering because I had some dried meats promised courtesy oh, of your man, mom, Lisa. I think, I think they're bringing you some deer meat, some I'll, old beef jerky or deer jerky. Yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> okay, what's the first pitch here to Reese Hampton? Uh, I don't know. I want you to tell me what you're thinking. I think heater. Give me heater? good stuff. Yeah. Two seam, four seam, what are we talking? Four seam. All right, here we go. <sighs> yeah, that's gas. So you call your own pitches. Here we go. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Build a <laughs> build, build just catches him. <laughs> Here's tall ball. Dang it, I'm falling out to the right. Tall ball's the slider. Yes, sir. And now 2-0, we need to find a strike. What What is your best strike pitch? What I throw most accurately, definitely the uh, two seam. Here it comes right here. OK, perfect. Dang it. Just a pinch down, 3-0. And you're going to go after him. Two seam again? Yes, sir. That was it. Good spot. Let's do it again. Two seam again? I, whatever you would like. I think two seam makes the most sense. Here we go. Oh, my gosh. Reese wanted to stay in the box. He, <laughs> he swung backwards. He didn't even know it was ball for sprint. What is he doing? No, he wanted he <laughs> wanted another offering from you. Okay, so Hampton gets his second sprint of the night. And you have been adequately warmed up. So do you start Fisher off with a two seat? This is the first ball I've thrown all day on the steel since I got on the mound. Perfect. Here we go. Four center, here we go. Might hit him with a tall ball. Yeah. Oh my oh, God! Tall ball behind his tush. <laughs> get, that, him off, get him off your plate. Did that not hit his butt? I thought that hit him right in the butt. Somehow it avoided it. Dude, I am off right now. Oh my gosh. That's okay. We got a couple bases to play with here. That one off Bill's glove. That'll be a pass ball, gets Hampton up to second. All right, here we go, gotta lock in, Biko, gotta lock in. No doubt about that. All right. That's locked in, tapped in. There we go. That's accountable. Oh my gosh. That's uncrustable. Uncrustables? That is the number one locker room snack right there. Out of boy. There we go. Let's get out of here. Here we go. Nice. <laughs> Still, thanks so much for getting mic'd yes, up. Sir. Hey, Biko, I love y'all, man. Love you too, love dude. Love you too, man. It is aw awesome being inside the mind of Dakota Stilts All Britain as he bears down. And feeds Ryan Cox his third trick play of the ball game. Yeah, perfect pitch from Dakota Stiltsall, Britton, and Ryan Cox with an excellent trick play there. The hat trick for him so far tonight. So as we're halfway through the seventh, a reminder that our buzzword tonight for Zappos is paradise. And let's look at how good each of these teams has been offensively in the seventh inning on because you look at the 330 batting average for the party animals, that's incredible until you look at the Bananas hitting 378 in the final three frames. Well, look, when we have talked about these games coming down to the final inning, we really mean it, and it's shown up in the data this season. Party Animals batting 330 in the final three innings, and you would think that's a fantastic mark, but the Bananas are doing better than them. A 378 batting average in innings seven through nine, and you see the guys who are leading the charge for these two teams. Skull and Cornette each batting 500, and Tosh Border with a 449 mark himself. And meanwhile, Danny do it all. He was fantastic batting in late game situations last year. He has kept it up early on here in 2024. Yeah, he came into the tour 
tonight, or came into tonight's ball game, five for 12 on the tour, rather. Four for five, hitting in the final three innings. It's a good job by Lewigs and Albritton, keeping the party animals off the board in the top of the seventh. Now Zach Blankenship will try and do the same in the bottom half as he's the second man out of the pen tonight. First it was Helton for five, then Ponce came in relief, and now Blankenship. Yeah, and Zach Blankenship has allowed a walk-off on this year's tour, just an inning and two-thirds pitch. MPI, he's still trying to get lower down, but really what he struggled with is the balance of being in the strike zone without giving up too many hits. But here he goes first pitch, and DR Meadows will chop this one up the middle to Chase Acuff, who's able to get a quick first out for Zach Blankenship. That's what you like to see to lower that minutes per inning time. DR two for three on the night now. Gabe Howell one for one with the sack fly. Blankenship getting into the ball game in relief means all four Jacksonville kids for the party animals have played a part in this ball game. Blankenship out of Fleming Island, just like Tanner Thomas, holding down left field for him. And Swan and Delano, the other two guys out of Duval County. Zach with the heater, upper 80s, lower 90s. Throws mostly two seam sinkers. Will work a curveball, change up, and splitter in as well as Gabe Howell smacks it to the Fleming Island man himself, Tanner Thomas, there to retrieve the loud out. Yeah, hard hit off the bat of Gabe Howell. Thought it might carry, much like Eric Jones, Ju Eric Jones Jr.'s home run did earlier in this ball game, but it's Thomas with a great read on that ball and backing Zach Blankenship, who's already recorded two outs in just one minute and 20 seconds. Now the Largo Florida man at the dish. The ever dangerous Dan Oberst in his sixth campaign as a banana, third as a pro. It's a pitcher's pitch to get Blankenship back in the count. Foul ball, count goes full. Payoff pitch, lined into right field. Base knock for the 2021 Golf South Conference Player of the Year. And the inning winning run aboard. And out of Davie, Florida, Michael Vitamin Deeb. Try and bring home Oberst. The extra hitter, a ground out and fly out so far tonight. Fly out was struck very well. And after Dan had an 11 game banana ball hitting streak snapped in Sunday's Banana Fest game, how else would he respond to that? Of course, by collecting two hits with the run batted in. Chopper towards Swan. He steps in front of Baber, flips from his tush, can't get it to first in time. He might have beat it out anyhow. Oberst goes to third on what will be an E3 on the throw. The question is, is it an E3 to allow Deep to reach first at all? I don't, I don't think so. Me neither. I think it was one of those situations where the ball was kind of hit in that perfect position. Blankenship didn't exactly think to cover the bag right away and of course, this turf is still kind of wet, and you saw Swanee slip a little bit probably due to that. So now the inning winning run 90 feet away, and last year's tour leader in walk-offs will be pinch hit for by Reese Alexiades, the Pioneer League MVP. Deep swipe second, and the count one and two on the man out of Manhattan Beach, California. And it's Alexiotis still looking for his first career banana ball walk-off. And we've seen him take a lot of mighty hacks so far, but 
Still hasn't come up with that big hit that he's necessarily been looking for. This could be the one to jumpstart the rest of the tour for him. As it goes up the middle, Chase Acup has a diving spot, but the stop, but the speed of Reese Alexianis is too much as the Bananas are able to jump right back in front in this ball game. Now three points to two through seven. There is Super Reese's first banana ball walk-off. Big dance at the dish to celebrate the occasion. Alexiadis comes through in the clutch, pinch hitting. That's the end of our Zappos shoe giveaway. And let's get it down to Deerman for some dancing in the dark. Dance battle going on right now. We got Taylor, Aaron, Ryan, and Ryan. But to spice up this dance battle, we have them blindfolded. Now fans, they're gonna be going absolutely crazy and you're gonna vote for who you like the best. So Shark, spin that beat! All right, they're grooving, they're moving. All right, all four of them are looking great. Let's make some noise, fans! Oh my gosh, all four of them have amazing moves! I can't believe it! This is gonna be hard! Can we get some blossoms? Let's do it! Gentlemen, remove your blindfolds. Right. You know how long you've been dancing here by yourself? Well, uh... Georgia Southern Eagle dances by himself all the time. <laughs> Guys, let's give it up for Ryan! Congratulations to Ryan. We head to the eighth inning. What an unbelievable ball game we have on our hands. Zach Phillips will come in to relieve Dakota Stilts All Britain. Phillips, a 27th round draft pick in 2019 by the Kansas City Royals. Spent four years in their organization. Got up to double A before finding his way to banana ball last year. And this is already his sixth relief appearance in 10 games in 2024. Yeah, he's been the banana's go-to arm out of the pen for two reasons. He's wildly effective, and boy, does he work quick out there on the mound. You saw him get the pitch right back from Villaroy and instantly go into the windup to deliver that pitch, and he's a guy still looking to set the banana ball record for fastest inning in history. So far this season, the fastest inning he's thrown, one minute and 34 seconds. Nine seconds behind our fastest frame of the tour so far. That one over the leap of Phillips. And Howell flipping towards first on the first base side of the diamond for the school shift. Never had a chance to get the former first round draft pick who had a two run shot the other way his last time up. This is why Skull was taken 15th overall out of high school. Then he shows you the speed on the infield single on his next plate appearance. So he's two for four, always a threat to run as Dalton Cornett has his bat broken into two pieces and a trick play, Ryan Cox, fourth of the night, lying down as his tour leading 23rd on the season. He always makes it look so easy. Ryan Cox giving up the mobility and coming down with that trick play. And it's a big first out for Zach Phillips as well, who now goes to work against the righty Bryson Bloomer. Bloomer two for three. Finding his stroke. That's a good pickoff attempt. Phillips steps off with the left foot behind the mound. Quick snap throw to first. Of course, he can pick up the right and go to first as well. Goal pacing the party animals, five steals in six attempts. And this one through the four hole, no! Jackson Olsen sliding stop. Never had a chance to get Bloomer though. It doesn't reach the outfield. As we have a pair of infield singles, two party animals on the bags for the red hot Tanner Tinder Thomas. 
And look, the fact that it didn't reach the outfield might be pretty crucial for the Bananas here. If it had rolled into right, I think Jake Skull, an aggressive base runner, would have been taking that turn for third base. Instead, Olsen had to keep him halted at second base there. Especially with one out, the extra 90 feet. Oh, so important. 1-1 one, one count on Thomas, the left fielder, two for three. Double single and a pop out in foul territory. Skull caught, dead to rights, but the throw's into center. Jake will now get up and thinks better of trying to take third. If it was a good throw, Skull could have been in trouble, but it was a wild one from Philly. And still two on with one away as we have a one-two count. Beautiful curveball. Thomas gets the bat on it, and it's gonna fall foul. Cox, the closest man to it, will do another one-two pitch. Yeah, it looks like that one might fall in no man's land. Jake Skull off automatically, just gunning for home. Now has to retreat back to second, and this at bat just gets a little bit tougher for Tanner Thomas as he's seen Philly go in his traditional stretch and also throw a couple of sidearm pitches as well. So now you're wondering which way Philly attacks you here with two strikes. You have to look out for the four seam, two seam, and cut fastball as well as the curve you just saw and a change up as we get another check on Skull. It was close. Ryan Cox wants the bananas or the fans to challenge. And Tyler Gillum will throw out the yellow smoke bomb himself. And now, Austin Krasminski throws the smoke bomb off the grass. And we will get our second challenge of the ball game. Party animals have already used theirs. Let's get it here from the control room. Zach Frangelo, Vincent Chapman on the headset. We look at it here. Oh! We get another look at it here. Bang, bang. Need to see that slowed down. Oh boy. That's the shot right there. Get, yep, frame by frame here, guys. He's out. He's out. Clearly out. That's an overturned call. So Skull doesn't get dirty, he pays the price. And a hug of sadness between Chapman, Stetson, and Wheeler after they have a call overturned. And he gets Billy out of quite the predicament here, now has two outs and no runners in scoring position either. And he's one strike away from getting out of this inning, allowing no runs. A long stare into Leroy. And now the one two will come home. Two and two. Loomer still leads off of first. He takes off, delayed steal, nobody covering. Bryson Bloomer running at 80% speed has his first steal of the tour. And you could just see Bill Leroy a little bit frustrated about that there, was really gunning for the throw to second base there and just had to eat it. And there was a lot of disgust. Now Tanner swinging 3-2, skies this one into left field, rack tracking over into foul territory. will come up with a big third out for the Bananas here in the top of the eighth. They will continue to stay one point ahead in this ball game. And they can double their lead with just one run here in the bottom of the eighth. It's time to turn one, two, one, financial ballpark yellow. Warms the heart. Still to see so many lights in the sky here in River City. Ball game that 
It didn't get underway until 8.39 p.m. Eastern. And at 10.19 p.m., about an hour and 20 minutes later than any banana ball game should ever go, thanks to our two-hour time limit, the Bananiacs and Party Animals Faithful still with a very strong showing. from the young professor. Daytona's own. Aaron Jacks. Loving the Duval love. Dylan Porter will be the fourth party animal to pitch tonight. As we head to the bottom of the eighth, reminder that we will have the Bananas closer, Danny Hosley, on the mic for the top of the ninth inning, should they send him out there, which we believe will be the plan. For now, you look at Porter, who became the de facto closer for this team on the end of last tour and has been really good in that role. Yeah, and we've seen him lower his average MPI early on in this 2024 World Tour. With three minutes and 56 seconds, the average time it takes him to record three outs. The only thing that's really hindered Dylan Porter so far on the tour, five ball four sprints allowed compared to just one strikeout. He'd like to start to reverse that trend here tonight in Jacksonville. The Oakland, California native has 678 Eric Jones Jr., Robert Anthony Cruz, and Bill Leroy. All due to swinging here in the bottom of the eighth as the Nanners look for an insurance run, which would immediately turn into an insurance point. As the party animals did not get any runs in the top half of the inning, so just one will walk the frame off for the Nanners here. EJ blasted a two-run homer out to left. Won the fifth inning in one fell swoop. That was his fifth inning ender of the season. One behind Dan Oberst for the tour lead. Is, gives this a good little ride to right. Skull moseys on over. Big first out for Porter, who brings a four-pitch mix of a four-seam fastball, about 90 to 93 miles an hour. Curveball slider and change up to round it out. And it's the eighth innings in which the Bananas have done their best work this season. They're batting 467 as a team in the eighth inning and have been able to claim a lot of insurance points and also tie up ball games going into the final inning. They'll try and do it here against Porter. And again, it is going to be fun to see if these closers can silence the bats while mic'd up. Can't wait to have Hosley. Rio on Rack, who doubled his last time up. Deep off the right center field wall. He takes four straight bad ones and will be content with one base on the sprint. All seven party animals have to touch the ball before it's live behind the pitcher and catcher. And Cruz has his third career ball for sprint. Dalton Malden will pinch hit here for Bill Leroy. Big spot for the man in his third tour. Chops it towards third. Bloomer will go the short way and Dustin Baber can't handle it. Just bounces off his glove. That's a rare Baber error, although fourth of this young tour. And the inning winning run in scoring position, still just one out as Brandon Crosby will pinch hit for Jackson Olsen. Yeah, it was a great throw from Bar Bryson Bloomer who was really thinking about the force out there. Instead, it puts a runner in scoring position for the Bananas. And we saw Brandon Crosby in his last start collect two RBI singles for the Bananas. And 
He'll try and do it once again and get them that very, very important insurance point. Crosby, a stud out of the Pioneer League. A lot of those here in Banana Land. Brandon out of Mechanicsville, Virginia. Cutting a miss on the Porter Heater. Now the count three balls and a strike on the man who has spent the last two summers in the Pioneer League. Crosby still hasn't drawn a ball for a sprint this season. This could be the exact perfect time for that to occur as the Bananas would be able to walk off this inning. And Dylan Porter runs it inside to Brandon Crosby. Rack coming around to score. And the Bananas now out to a two-point lead going into the final inning tonight in this ball game. They will slide it out to celebrate. And we will get it down to the young professor as the Nanners are three outs away from their fifth straight victory. We will have Danny Hosley on the mic as he tries to make it a perfect four for four on the tour in his save opportunities. Young professor, take it away. And with a walk off of the eighth inning, it is now time to cast our gaze upon that scoreboard. The score right now is four points for the Savannah Bananas to two points for the Barney Animals. But here's the thing about the game of Banana Ball. In the final inning, every run counts for a point. That means the Barney Animals need to strike now if they hope to continue this game. On the other hand, the Savannah Bananas need just three outs to secure a victory here tonight. So ladies and gentlemen of Jacksonville, Florida, make some noise and welcome to the final inning! Danny Hosley. Boys. Becoming a common occurrence, your third time trying to nail down a save with the mic on you. Oh, oops, I oh, slipped on that one. That's okay. Caught me off guard a little bit in the ear right there, Biko, I'm not gonna lie. Well, I was trying to scare you. Uh, it's all right, you got me. You got me good, man. Rare to get the calm, cool, collected <laughs> closer for the bananas riled up. Haas, you're gonna have oh. Acuff, Delano, and Baber, seven, eight, nine here. Yeah, man, tough, tough matchup here. I remember Acuff in the last, Last time, change up down for a double in the left. So we're gonna stick away from that. Stick away from that. Try and beat him with heat today. Yeah, Chase has four hits in the ninth inning on the tour so far. He's been onions He's been when the game matters up, most. Tearing me up. Ooh. Not all you. Ah. Not all against you. It's all right, man. He's getting his. Chase is swinging a hot bat this year, man. First pump the other day. How about them apples? He's got a couple sack flies tonight. Reached on an error his last time. Oh, guys been doing it, man. Whew. Here we go. Let's bring that heart rate down a little bit. We're a little, a little elevated here right now. Whew. What's the first pitch going to be, Danny? We got a heater away, baby. Oh, Ooh, just a little off. I'm bad miss, though. Same spot, same spot. Yeah. Oh, yank that thing. Danny, do you have a prediction for your MPI time this inning? No idea, to be honest with you. Let's just see if we can find the zone here. There it is. And wow! Oh, might be gone. Chase Acuff! Ooh, Holy guacamole! What did I say, man? He's swinging a hot bat. Mother Shoot. Good job, Danny. On the censoring there, that is. <laughs> Acuff turned on that puppy. He has two home runs in his last three games. He's Not, tied ooh. for the tour lead. Good swing, man. I'll let him have his moment, but I feel a little angry after that. I'm not going to lie to you, Josh and Biko. Well, hopefully it will make you feel better that Garrett Delano has a mic on him, too. Oh, boy. Can I hear him? Yo, I can hear him. Well, no cheating here. <laughs> no cheating here. I'll let him get set. No worries. I'll have to do a little sound. 
That was a good one. Here we go. Come on now. Oh. Oh. Delano, thanks for going to my con. You're welcome. <laughs> Sorry, There's one. Uh, this guy. Are going to their golden batter. Batting in the place of Dustin Baber. Please welcome the golden batter, Reese Hempton! We've had this matchup a handful of times this year. You got him out twice in a row, a week ago in Savannah. A few times, man. That was a, that was a tough that bat for him, having this hard 90 and then come back. So, let's see if we're gonna keep him on his toes this that bat here. Spot. There we go. Let's see if we can go off of that. Peter it was. That looks Doc. like an out. Doc, we got a guy, baby. My guy. I'll hawk it down. It's all red out there. Ladies and gentlemen, there's two outs. Now it all comes down to you and the Jacksonville kid, Jason Swan. Isn't this a storybook ending right here? Oh boy. Ronnie squared the ball up a few times tonight. Only has a couple fly outs and ground out to show for it. Yeah. Here we go, boys. Let's see if we can do it. Breaking ball here, breaking ball. Come on, make me a play. Ah, it's all right, it's all right. Yeah, tough in-betweener for Gabe Howell. You threw the out, it's and right, now it happens. It you happens. get to face Reese again. I got you, boys. Oh, again. My treat, isn't it? You're a lucky guy. My lucky day. Well, we got to run on first now. Cannot let him get to second here. Gonna have to keep a close eye on Swanee over there. There it is. Oh, Bill. Boy, if that net wasn't there, that was Josh and I. My heart skipped a beat right there. That's all right. <laughs> We're okay. The net saved us. <laughs> I was coming right at you, boys. Huh? We would love it if you could get us a foul ball out to end the game. If I had that much skill, Josh and Biko, I don't think I'd be here, man. I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> if I had the skill to do that. We'll just see what you can do. There it is. Oh, maybe a fan? Maybe I, a fan? I think out of play, yep, yeah, ricochet. It's all right. One strike away. Whew. Here we go, boys. What are we going with? I think maybe a heater up. I like it. Heater up. And Bill, same page, baby, same page. Oh. Oh, wow. He was ready for that. Oh, my. Boy, was ready for that. Thank God I missed there. <laughs> Let's see, dude. I, so this this is where the mind game comes into play here. I kind of want to go back to it because he was so on it. I don't think he thinks I'm going back to it. Got to feel a heater again. Reverse psychology. Exactly. Oh, same page, baby. I see you, Bill. Bill's on the same page. Now, what do you tunnel off of that? I don't know. He's hit that breaking ball pretty far a time or two. I don't know if I can. I like this call here. I like this call here. Ugh. Eat it up, baby. At a boy, EJ. At a boy. Come on now. Go thank your catchers. Here we go, Bill. Where you at? Let's go, boys. Come on. Hey, God. Come on, baby. Go, baby. Where you sneak, baby? Where you sneak out of there. Where's Bill? Go work, baby. Go work, baby. Thank you. Danny Hosley, four for four on saves. Thank you again. <laughs> Little nail biter, boys, but appreciate you, boys, for having me. Right back at I love you, you Big Joe and Josh. Goodbye, Bill. Goodbye, Danny. What a hard fought.
four to three victory for the Bananas. They have won five in a row. And now sit at six and four on this tour after starting one and four. Welcome inside the broadcast booth alongside Josh Talevsky. I am Biko Scala. Thank you so much for spending your Big Tiger Friday with us here in virtual Banana Land. Boy, oh boy, it was a doozy from the get-go. The Bananas had the lead, lost it, took it again, and the insurance run that they pushed across on that Brandon Crosby sprint in the eighth inning ended up being the difference thanks to that Chase Acuff absolute shot in the top of the ninth. Yeah, Chase Acuff seeing the ball really great, but so yeah. is this Bananas offense. Again, we saw them continue to score in the later innings of these ball games. They have given party animals relievers a lot of trouble, but overall, really clean banana ball game one hour and 55 minutes all it took to finish this one and 15 total trick plays tonight one off of the 2024 season high for a single game and the bananas really just continue to rack up the trick plays ryan cox of course led the way with four but we saw an impressive showing the double trick plays from kyle lewigs and eric jones jr and even the outfield trick plays tonight reese hampton dr meadows matching each other trick for trick it might have been the most impressive trick play game we've seen so far this year. Yes, it might have been the most impressive trick play game in banana ball history. This is the 123rd game in our young sport. And although there have been more trick plays before, personally, I think the variety and skill of the trick plays we saw tonight is more impressive than anything we had seen in the previous 122 games. Well, it's always really cool to see both Reese Hampton and D.R. Meadows collect multiple trick plays, and they're doing it in different ways. D.R. not only goes two backflips, no, just one backflip tonight, and then decides to go behind the back and make that snag. And you saw diversity from Reese Hampton catching one on the run yet again, which is one of the hardest trick plays that can be pulled off, regardless of whether you're an infielder or an outfielder. And, of course... Double trick plays tonight, and for the first time in banana ball history, seeing a first baseman go 360 on the reception and still step on the back for the out. Really, really cool accomplishment from EJ. Now, Jake Skull grabbed his second home run of the tour today. He now has three homers in three career games here in 1-2-1 one -one Financial Ballpark. Uh, Chase Acuff also grabbed his second home run of the tour. And son of a gun, I was at Trailer Park Pizza Party a couple nights ago with Zach Phillips and a bunch of the boys, and Zach said, hot take, top three on the tour at home runs is Chase Acuff. And I gave him a lot of gruff about it, throwing jokes his way. I mean, Chase had four home runs across a five-year <laughs> collegiate career. I'm like, come on. Philly. We've got the numbers, but Acuff, 10 games in, stands tied for the tour lead in the ding-dong category. Well, look, when this guy debuted in Banana Ball in the 2022 Summer Series, he was a doubles machine, just continuing to get extra bases, led the party in animals offensively across those six games. Now, we still saw a lot of good signs offensively from Chase Acuff in 2023, but he's taking it to a new level, and you've got to credit some of the new coaches that have come into Banana Ball as well. Acuff getting to work with Ray Ortega and especially Anthony Coromato. They have really helped him with his swing as he, he has told us on multiple occasions that occasions that he feels he has taken it to the next level, not only in his defense and trick plays, but in his offensive abilities. You know, just I, I think we have to harp on the trick plays a tiny bit more because I, I, I just don't I don't think we've done them justice, even though we're already waxing poetic about it. Uh, first of all, the first two ever double trick plays. We have to congratulate Eric Jones Jr. Pulls off the behind-the-back snag at first base for the first time ever in banana history. A half inning later, son of a gun, he does it again. I mean, just... All out aggressiveness. You could tell that it was something on the bananas minds because one of the things they did yesterday before coming down to Jacksonville was play a scrimmage game and have every play, it had to result in a trick play on defense. Right. So the bananas, every ball that was hit their way, this is what they were attempting. And it clearly paid off for them in general. Again, 15 trick plays tonight and and puts us right back on pace to possibly gun for 1,000 trick plays between the Bananas and Party Animals on this year's tour. Yeah, that is a fact right there. Heck of a job by EJ, DR, 
uh, Reese Hampton, and of course the glove magician himself, Ryan Cox, produces four trick plays. He is pacing the tour with 23 on the season. Okay, before we shut this thing down, we do have to give away a free pair of shoes courtesy of our best of friends, our confidants over at Zappos. And our winner today, Josh Tulevsky. <laughs> Zappos. <laughs> Kathy Oldfield. Kathy Oldfield, congratulations on your free pair of shoes courtesy of Zappos. Okay, the cast and crew that made this production possible. As always, it starts with the first base camera. That's Emerson Elmgren, the Iron Horse of BTV. Across the diamond, Lex Fowler. Four straight games. Lex continues to dominate there. On high home, it was Clayton Franklin, a legend of the game. On center field, Taylor Cordona. Taylor, thank you so much for helping us out on BTV. On high first, Jeff Haynes. Yes, Jeff. On high third, Katie Richmond. Katie, thank you so much. And on the utility, Nick Keldy getting all kinds of cats mic'd up throughout the evening. He was all over the place. Thank you so much to our roaming cameraman as well. That would be Chris Haynes. Two Haynes on one broadcast. Two Haynes! You betcha. Our coordinating producer tonight here from 121 Financial Ballpark, Kylie Sadamka. She's a superstar, as is our director in the control room in Savannah, Georgia, Chad Reese, our coordinating producer of BTV. We miss you, buddy. Our technical director, Griffin Ellis, pressing all the right buttons on the switcher. On replay, key Megan Woods nailing it on a couple challenges and everything else we wanted to see more than once tonight. On the audio, one name, you know him, you love him. It is Kwanzi on the ones and the twos. The score bug dominated by Bella Soto. Once again, Bella, great to have you back. On the graphics, come on, you can fill in the blank, all you regulars out there. Julia Massey, are you kidding me, Julia? And on the statistics being updated throughout the night on said graphics, Mikey O'Connor. They are the two best graphics folks in the entire business. A very special thank you to Drake Toll for joining us during our pregame rain delay podcast festivities, as well as once the broadcast truly started rumbling, Robert Anthony Cruz, Sean Fluke, Jason Swan, Dakota Stilts Albritton, Danny Hosley, and Garrett Delano for all getting mic'd up tonight. Yeah, it was quite the fun night. Biko Scala, I commend you as well. Fantastic work on the play-by-play. -play. You dominated Big Tiger Friday, and I would say you're the cat's pajamas. <laughs> Thank you very much. Josh Talevsky, the statistical savant of Banana Ball and color coordinating. Absolute extraordinaire. Uh, thank you to our executive producers of BTV. Watching from home, Jesse, Emily, and Carrie Cole, as well as Jared Orton. For everybody here in Bananas Television, I am Biko Scala saying so long for now. We will be back tomorrow night, 7 p.m., first pitch Eastern, if Mother Nature will let us get going at an adequate time. Until we see you tomorrow night for Game 11 on this 2024 tour, we'll see you later!